Hi friends, welcome back to Moody Blooms. I'm Mary Ellen and today we're going to learn about fuzzy succulents. Now there's not too many things I love more than a soft, velvety, fuzzy succulent. We're going to learn how to care for these beauties and we're going to learn their actual names as well. So stay tuned. Sedum hintonii is one of the most beautiful sedums of all. It is a slow-growing, mat-forming succulent that grows up to 8 inches tall. It forms dense rosettes bearing tiny egg-shaped leaves, densely covering with little white hairs. In winter, look for little white flowers, and in Mexico, they bloom in April. The Kalanchoe tomentosa is native to Madagascar and best known as the panda plant, donkey ears, and sometimes referred to as pussy ears as the leaves look similar to cat ears. Its silvery green leaves grow thick for water storage purposes, which make this a great drought tolerant succulent. This is a must have fuzzy succulent with its furry and velvety like leaves that are covered in tiny hairs that give the plant a velvety look and feel. On top of the velvet look, the tips are rimmed with dark brownish red edges. This beauty is also a fairly easy succulent to care for and maintain. Tomentosa refers to the fuzzy, felt-like coating of hairs that cover the whole plant and help it survive in sunny, dry conditions. To grow the panda plant outdoors, it's best in USDA hardiness zone 9A and above. It also does well as an indoor plant. Kalanchoe tomentosa prefers full sun to partial shade and prefers morning or late afternoon sun. Be sure to protect it from intense afternoon rays and from your dog and cats, as it has been found to be toxic to pets. Kalanchoe tomentosa chocolate soldier is a beautiful cinnamon brown cultivar of the popular panda plant from Madagascar. It has rich chocolate colored leaves with nearly black markings at the tips. The perfect contrast plant to any succulent arrangement. It is super low maintenance and does well indoors as a house plant and does well outdoors to around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The chocolate soldier grows upright with loose rosettes and its oval shaped leaves range in color from light brown to rusty red. In spring, look for maroon to copper balloons that have the same fuzzy coating as the rest of the plant. This variety stays small and tidy in a pot and only needs water when the soil is completely dry. This resilient plant is happiest in well-draining soil and thrives in full sun to part shade. It's easy to propagate from stem cuttings or from leaf cuttings. The Kalanchoe iriophila is also known as the snow white panda plant or snow bunny. It is a naturally occurring species from rocky habitats in Madagascar and is one of the wooliest succulents of all. Its long green leaves are covered in such a dense matting of fine felt hairs that the whole plant appears pure white. More sun exposure can induce pink to brown edging. In midwinter, this beauty produces sweet violet blooms of four large petals, but takes quite some time to fully bloom. It prefers a poor soil with adequate drainage, bright light for the wooliest appearance, and water thoroughly when the soil is dry to the touch. It is a drought tolerant succulent and needs protection from frost. The Kalanchoe biharinesis, also known as velvet elephant ear, Velvet Kalanchoe, or felt bush, is a slow-growing succulent. The Biharinesis part of the name references the plant's native region of Bihara in South Madagascar. This eccentric tree-like succulent can eventually grow up to 12 feet tall and is the largest Kalanchoe species. It has a thick stem and is a slow grower that produces triangular leaves covered in short brown branched hairs that give it a soft and velvety texture. The underparts of the leaves feature a bronze-like color, while the undersides are typically a silver-gray color. When the plant matures, it produces small greenish-yellow flowers in winter. It prefers full sun or light shade and is drought tolerant. It is frost tender and needs protection much below 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Kalanchoe biharinesis fang, commonly known as felt plant, felt bush, or velvet leaf kalanchoe, is a tall, upright grower with large fuzzy leaves of silvery green with cinnamon dotted edges. The dramatic leaves have scalloped margins and their undersides grow fangs that resemble sharp teeth. Fang makes a great houseplant as it can tolerate partial sun but loves bright light. It can easily be propagated from leaves like most kalanchoes. 
A great sculptural succulent for the succulent garden or in a large pot. Keep on the dry side to prevent root rot. Kalanchoe melati grows upright to about 12 inches tall and has thick, beautiful, silver green fuzzy leaves. The hazy green leaves have a serrated margin that look like a holly leaf. It prefers full sun to partial shade, loves bright light, and requires porous soil. It can tolerate a very light frost and survives in temperatures from 35 to 95 degrees and does best in USDA hardiness zones 10B to 11B. Be sure to allow the succulent to dry out in between waterings. Look for greenish yellow blooms in summer that grow in clusters. You can propagate this beauty via stem cuttings or leaves. Kalanchoe orgalis or better known as copper spoons, leather plant, cinnamon bear, or shoe leather kalanchoe, is from a native rocky habitat in Madagascar. This succulent is a two-toned stem variety and has velvety copper spoon-shaped leaves on top of silver underneath. This succulent is a two-toned stemmed variety and has velvety copper spoon-shaped leaves on top and silver underneath. Of course, both sides of the leaves are covered with hairs of corresponding colors. As the cinnamon brown leaves age, they will turn completely silver. Look for clusters of pretty yellow blossoms in late winter to spring. It prefers partial sun to light shade and loves bright light. Silver teaspoons are native to Madagascar and are a fast growing succulent. The luminescent silvery white leaves have a fuzzy felt like texture. These plants are perfect to add height and color contrast to any succulent arrangement. They thrive in full sun to bright shade and love morning sun. Protect these beauties from frost and be sure to bring them indoors if kept outside in cold winter temperatures. Water only when the soil is thoroughly dry. Kalanchoe hildebrandti are very similar to Kalanchoe bracteata, which are also known as silver teaspoons. They are commonly mistaken for each other and can be differentiated by the flowers they produce. The bracteata has red to orange bell-shaped blooms and the Hildebrandti has white to pale greenish white flowers. Now this next Crassula is quite a mouthful. It's also known as Crassula David and it is a thick and low growing succulent with fleshy bright green coin shaped leaves. This is a carpet forming vigorous green plant and makes an ideal wall or basket succulent. It grows in clusters with dense foliage and will only grow to about five centimeters in height. This miniature Corsula variety is named after David Cumming, who found and collected the variety from South Africa in the 1980s. It's a pretty rare succulent, but quite easy to grow. Keep it dry and in full sun to maintain its compact growth. It can turn a beautiful purple red color when exposed to full sun throughout winter or when stressed. Corsula congesta green beans have adorable chubby oval foliage that are soft and velvety and look like little beans. Moderate stress from bright sun or drought can bring out a warm pink flushing at the leaf tips. Look for white blooms in late spring to early summer. This next Crisula I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Messy Brian Themio, who knows. It's a succulent from South Africa with fuzzy green leaves with soft bristle-like hairs. Its stems can grow about 12 inches tall and turn woody over time. This next variety, known as Tanelli, has long, slender, gray-green leaves covered with a frosty, velvety appearance. This unique succulent adds the perfect texture to any succulent arrangement. Look for blooms that grow in clusters of red flowers. Cotyledon tomentosa, also known as the bear's paw, is one of the cutest little fuzzy plants around and definitely one of my favorites. The bright green leaves have bits of reddish brown teeth along the edges of the leaves when exposed to bright light. The leaves resemble claws of bears, hence the name bear's paw. They prefer regular deep watering in summer, which is its active growing season. Each of the puffy succulent leaves has tiny teeth at the tips, giving them the impression of a paw. The teeth turn red when the plant is exposed to bright light. This plant blooms in spring bringing forth bell-shaped flowers that may be orange, pink, yellow, or orange-red. The Cotyledon tomentosa variegata is a beautiful dwarf shrublet with green and cream variegated leaves. Its foliage is thick, ovate, and hairy. Little dull teeth line the edges of each leaf, and they often turn pinkish-red when exposed to increased light and or stressors. 
bell-shaped flowers bloom in growing months and typically blush reddish orange to yellow. Diloperma echinatum, also known as the hedgehog ice plant, pickle plant, or pickle cactus, is a South African native and is more of a horizontal grower, though it's not uncommon to find plants with heights of 18 inches or so. Both stems and leaves are covered with spiny white hairs. Look for yellow flowers near the end of winter. The pickle plant prefers well-draining soil like most succulents and does well in full sun to partial shade. You can propagate this beauty by division, cuttings, or seeds. Echeveria doris taylor is also known as a woolly rose succulent. It is a popular, low-growing, clustering succulent, a hybrid between Echeveria setosa and Echeveria pulvinata ruby. Its attractive pale green hairy leaves produce red tips when exposed to bright sun and or stress. In spring and summer, look for bright red-orange spiky blooms with a yellow interior. Doris prefers partial sun to light shade, hardiness zones 9b to 11, and requires regular watering in the summer months. Unlike many succulents, the woolly rose should be kept in a moist mixture of soil throughout the year. She reaches up to 5 inches in height and requires regular watering in summer months. Be sure to cut back on watering and stop fertilizing once winter sets in. Echeveria pulvinata is best known as red velvet echeveria, chenille plant, ruby blush, or ruby slippers because it has a crimson velvety coating to protect it from the intense sun of its rocky habitats. It is a hybrid plant with a soft hairy stem and chubby leaves. In fact, the name pulvinata refers to its cushion-like leaves. It is a sun-loving plant and needs protection from hard frosts. A little bit of environmental stress like direct sun and temperatures just above freezing bring out the brightest reds along leaf margins. This low maintenance succulent does well in the ground or in a pot as long as it has great drainage and gets plenty of sunshine. In winter, look for flower stalks covered with orange bell-shaped flowers. The rosettes will stay fairly small, but the fuzzy stems underneath will continue to branch and grow up to 10 inches long. It propagates easily from leaf and stem cuttings. Echeveria pulvinata frosty is commonly known as white chenille plant and has a very pale green, almost whitish leaves that are covered in tiny hairs. These velvety soft hairs help protect the succulent from intense sun in its native rocky habitat of Mexico. This succulent is a pretty heavy bloomer in winter and it produces up to 20 orange bell-shaped flowers at one time. Propagating the white chenille plant is easy through stem cuttings. Echeveria coccinea, also known as red echeveria, scarlet pussy, or conchita escarlata, is a semi-sprawling shrubby succulent. As with some of the other velvety leaf succulents, the Echeveria coccinea is a branching species that rapidly develops woody stems. Pruning this beauty back can keep it from getting too leggy. Plants grown in the ground in full sun can form attractive low-growing shrubs and grow up to several feet wide. Echeveria coccinea was the first Echeveria to arrive in Europe around 1790. Its blue-green leaves are covered in silver hairs and sometimes tinged red along the margins. From late winter into spring, look for relatively large reddish-orange flowers with bright yellow stamens. Echeveria coccinea recrevata is native to Mexico and is an erect plant with fluffy and curved leaves. It prefers full to partial sun and produces beautiful orange flowers. Although they are fairly drought tolerant, they will become more spectacular with regular deep watering and fertilizing. The hybrids tend to be less tolerant of frost and shade. In temperate climates, most species will lose their lower leaves in winter and become leggy and less attractive. Echeveria pulvicox. It is a beautiful plush hybrid of the Echeveria pulvinata and the Echeveria coccinea, with silvery hairs on its leaves and dark brown short hairs on its stems. It is a taller Echeveria, and this easy-to-grow succulent can eventually make a nice-sized bush. Look for blooms in spring on the long, hairy stems. These hybrids tend to be less tolerant of shade and frost. In temperate climates, most species will lose their lower leaves in the winter and become leggy and less attractive. An easy fix is to behead the longer stems and keep it more compact. Echeveria harmzii, also known as the plush plant, is a Mexican native. Its green leaves have a tinge of pink on their tips. In spring, look for bright orange urn-shaped flowers with yellow throats. 
it does best outside in hardiness zones 11A and above. Echeveria harmsii ruby slippers is another wonderful fuzzy leaf species. The leaves are blue-green and are tipped with various shades of pink, red, orange, and even purple. Like some other fuzzy leaf species, this one can get leggy and will need to be pruned back yearly. Echeveria pulv oliver is a hybrid between the Echeveria pulvinata and the Echeveria harmsii. This cute succulent has fuzzy red-tipped greenish-gray leaves and the reddish tint appears on the edges when exposed to more sun. The leaves cluster at the ends of branches to form rosettes. In late spring or summer, look for large blooms that are orange and yellow. The hairy light green leaves with red tip clusters at the end of the branches on this Echeveria grow to about eight to 10 inches tall. It prefers full sun to light shade, but it will get its best color in full sun. This low maintenance succulent is drought tolerant and prefers a well draining soil. It is hardy to about 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So how do we tell the difference between the Echeveria harmsii, the Echeveria pulvinata, and the Echeveria doris taylor? Well, the harmsii have red flowers with yellow tips and the pulvinata has reddish flowers, more of a reddish hair on its leaves. The doris taylor offsets more. Leaves are more green, wider, and thicker. And the flowers of the doris taylor are yellow inside with some red and yellow shading on the outside. Echeveria setosa is commonly known as Mexican firecracker and has been awarded the garden merit by the Royal Horticulture Society. The setosa is a stunning succulent that produces stemless rosettes that are approximately six inches in diameter with tons of spoon-shaped leaves. The foliage is green and is covered with closely cropped white hairs. In spring, look for red flowers with yellow tips on 12-inch stalks. Echeveria setosa aero has long, skinny leaves covered with velvety cilia. Beautiful red tips develop on the ends of the leaves when grown in bright sun, which is why its common name is Echeveria red velvet. They prefer full to partial sun, and this variety is durable and very drought tolerant. Water regularly during the first growing season to establish a good root system. Rosettes stay fairly small, and it is a great variety for succulent arrangements, flower beds, and rock gardens. In spring and early summer, look for red and yellow blooms. It is not cold hardy, about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is easy to propagate and pet safe. Echeveria setosa deminuta is a stunning evergreen succulent that grows in thick clusters of sky blue-green club-shaped foliage. Leaves are covered in white bristles that turn into tufts on the tips. It is known for its bright red and yellow flowers, and that is why it's commonly called the firecracker plant. This beauty is excellent for containers, window seals, and in rock gardens, however not cold hardy. This setosa needs water regularly during the first growing season to establish a good root system. Echeveria setosa rundelli is a rosette forming succulent with oval shaped fleshy leaves that are covered in fuzzy white hairs. Look for the cutest bell-shaped blooms in the spring that range from orange to red with yellow tips. This beauty is perfect for succulent arrangements, flower beds, and borders. This succulent produces pups or offshoots that can easily be propagated. Echeveria setosis rose and purpose, also known as Mexican firecracker or rose and J.A. purpose, is cute and furry, glistening with white, stiff, short hairs. It produces rosette succulents freely, giving offsets from the base and readily forming dense mounds. Adramiscus cristatus, best known as the crinkle leaf plant and sometimes called the key lime pie plant. Its gray green foliage is plump and wedge shaped with wavy ends. A light coating of short fine hairs dons this beauty. It is the easiest variety to grow of the Adramiscus genus, which includes many exotic beauties, and tends to need a little bit less water than other succulents. It is a perfect addition to any beach-themed planter and will grow up to about six inches in height. As a soft succulent native to South Africa, it needs protection from hard frosts, but it can grow slowly and thrive indoors on a sunny windowsill with only occasional water. This distinctive loose rosette has chunky triangular leaves with wavy edges. 
crinkle plant thrives in sunny rooms when potted in containers with drainage holes and gritty cactus or a succulent soil mix. Water deeply and only after the soil has fully dried out. Reduce watering frequency even more during winter dormancy to limit the risk of rot. Senecio haworthii is commonly called woolly Senecio clinea tomentosa or cocoon plant, and it's one of the purest white among the Senecio species. This South African native is a dwarf shrub with curved chunky leaves covered with a thick powdery wool. Yellow pom-pom shaped flowers are rare, but can produce blooms. Over time, it can grow tall and leggy stems, but it re-roots easily from cuttings. Plant in full sun in an open airy location with well-draining soil and water sparingly. Allow soil to dry out in between waterings as it is susceptible to root rot if given too much water or shade. This plant is called tontelbos in Africans, which means tinderbush. This is because the leaves are densely felted and can be stripped off, dried, and used as tinder. Keep drier in winter months and it is cold hardy to about 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that this plant will eventually darken towards the base of the stem as it grows, which is totally normal. Senecio medley woodii is native to the semi-tropical areas of Africa. A fuzzy succulent shrub with thick stems covered in white felt and oval shaped leaves. Dark green foliage is drought deciduous with densely felted white wool, which gives it its silvery appearance. This succulent has an upright growth habit when young, then as it gets older, it tends to sprawl. It prefers full to partial sun, about 40 to 95 degrees, and prefers cool and humidless conditions to maintain its beautiful pelt. Be sure to let the soil completely dry out in between waterings. In winter months, water less and protect it from frost. It can grow 15 to 18 inches tall if staked and propagates happily from cuttings. In winter, look for bright yellow daisy-like blooms with orange and yellow discs. Jacobaea marit aima is commonly known as silver ragwort or dusty miller and formerly known as Senecio cineraria. Native to the Mediterranean region, it's widely cultivated as an ornamental plant for its white, woolly, felt-like foliage. Heat and drought tolerant, growing one and a half to three and a half feet tall. Stems are stiff and woody at the base, covered in long, matted gray-white hairs. Flowers are yellow, daisy-like, with central disc florets surrounded by a ring of 10 to 13 ray florets. Tradescantia sia montana is commonly known as cobweb spiderwort, white velvet, white gossamer plant, or hairy wandering Jew. Named in reference to the plant's surface that is covered entirely in a dense cobweb-like white hairs. Leaves are arranged in a precise geometric shape. Almost completely white hairs cover all parts of the plants, the leaves, shoots, and even the buds. These protect the plant from direct sunlight and excessive evaporation. An upright grower when young, but later turns to prostrate as it grows and makes a fabulous ground cover. The fleshy ovate leaves vary in color from gray green, faded olive, or purple, and are covered in grayish white short hairs. In summer, look for abundant purple-pink blooms if well cultivated. The corolla consists of three bright petals and three small sepals. After flowering, cutting back the plants will promote a second bloom. The plant can be divided in spring with any shoots which are too long to be trimmed. Cobweb spiderwort is native to arid areas of Mexico and prefers partial shade but will tolerate full sun. Direct summer sun can cause sunburn, so gradual acclimation is needed. Moderate watering is best, around 30 inches of water per year, and be sure not to spray the leaves at all. Reduce watering and fertilizer in winter when the plant has gone into dormancy, and the minimum temperature during dormancy is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Soil should allow good drainage, with at least a third to half made up of coarse sand and gravel. Propagating is easy by cuttings, two to three inches long, rooted in sandy soil, or by dividing and transplanting the bush. Stachys byzantina, commonly called lamb's ears or woolly hedge nettle, is a species of stachys, native to Turkey, Armenia, and Iran, known for having the softest leaves in the world. Lamb's ear plants are perennial herbs with thick and somewhat wrinkled foliage. They're densely covered on both sides with gray or silver white little hairs. The undersides are more silver white in color than the top surfaces, and the leaves are arranged oppositely on the stems 
and are about two to four inches long. They are named lamb's ears because of the curved shaped leaves and the white soft fur-like hair coating. In late spring and early summer, look for tall spike-like stems with small light purple flowers. It is popular as an edging plant and in Brazil it is used as an edible herb called lambari. It has sometimes been used as a medicinal plant. Scientosis somaliensis is commonly called pussy ears or furry kittens and is an easy care house plant. Native to Somalia, hence the name somaliensis, related to inch plants, it can be grown in a low, shallow pot or let grown horizontally on a tabletop, mantle, desk, or other surface to great effect. This unusual house plant grows well in hanging baskets or tall containers. A spreading perennial with oblong, linear, pointing, arching, deep, green olive leaves are covered with white whisker-like hairs. Growing pussy ears in a bright spot for the happiest plant around 50 to 95 degrees. It prefers high light but tolerates medium light and does well as a ground cover in shadier spots. When pussy ears do not get enough light, it can become leggy with long stems between the leaves. If your plant grows too large or becomes too leggy, you can prune pussy ears without hurting it. Cut it back any time of the year. By cutting it back, you will encourage the pussy ears to become a fuller or bushier plant. In cold climates, it may come back from the ground in spring. Water pussy ears when the top inch or so of the potty mix is dry to allow drying between the waterings. Be sure not to let the potty mix get soggy or stay wet for long periods of time as it is susceptible to root rot. Fertilize your pussy ears plant in spring and summer with any general purpose houseplant fertilizer. Follow the directions on the product packaging as application rates and frequencies vary by brand. In summer, look for sporadic, small, purplish blue flowers with prominent gold stamens. They grow to about six inches tall and about 12 inches wide. Pussy ears add a lot of texture to a collection of houseplants, particularly if you pair it with coarser plants such as a Hoya or Ivy that have a very different leaf size or shape. Scientosis cuneensis is commonly known as teddy bear vine. Its trailing stems have fuzzy teardrop shaped chocolate brown leaves. Because of the plant's growth shape, it's best to grow teddy bear vine in a hanging basket or in front of a bright window or under fluorescent lights. It also does well on a flat surface, such as a tabletop where the stems can grow horizontally. It is a relatively slow grower, so no need to worry about this trailing houseplant getting out of control. Teddy bear vine prefers bright light. In most areas, it can take some direct sun on the leaves through the window, but this is best in the morning rather than the afternoon hours, as too much sun can cause sunburn. Water teddy bear vine when the top inch or so of the soil is dry. If you're unsure about watering teddy bear vine, it's best to let it stay consistently a little too dry than a little too wet. A moisture meter is a foolproof way to water as well. Fertilize your teddy bear vine in spring and summer months if you want to encourage growth. To propagate these beauties, take a stem cutting with about two or three pairs of leaves. Cut off the bottom leaves of the cutting and place in soil. Mist the soil to enhance rooting and growth. Once the plant starts growing back, go back to the usual watering schedule. Use a general purpose houseplant fertilizer and be sure to follow the directions in the packaging. Semper vivum arachnoidium tomentosum is one of the easiest plants to grow. Arachnoidium means like a spider web. Known as hens and chicks, these babies tolerate heat, drought, and neglect. They do well in rock gardens, container gardens of all types, rooftop gardens, and rock walls. Hundreds of varieties exist. All types form a low cushion or carpet of fleshy leaves, tiny new plants appearing in a circle around the mother in the middle. Typically after flowering, the mother rosette dies to leave room for new chicks. Sempervivum arachnoidium robin is another beauty in the Sempervivum family. Sempervivum ciliosum forms spheres of pointed, succulent, hairy green leaves. Mature rosettes may produce yellowish flowers on stalks up to about three and a half inches in summer. Despite a superficial resemblance, house leeks are not closely related to cacti. The Latin specific edifit ciliosum means with a small fringe. Another well-deserved recipient of the Royal Horticulture Society's Award of Garden Merit. This house leek throws up numerous, usually tiny offsets of about 10 centimeters in height. 
It has a spreading habit covering as much as 50 centimeters. The green leaves grow in a spherical formation. As it matures, it bears yellow blossoms on 10 centimeter stalks. As it, blo as, as it matures, it bears yellow blossoms on about four inch stalks. These usually come out in summer. To see the full extent of this beauty, be sure to give it full sunlight exposure. Besides amplifying the colors, the sun will help maintain the compactness of these rosettes. House leeks are a perfect option if you're looking for a cold, hardy, fuzzy succulent. They can tolerate temperatures down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but you'll have to shelter them from heavy downpours. Mammillaria is one of the largest genera in the cactus family, with currently 200 known species and varieties recognized. Most of these are native to Mexico, but some come from the Southwest United States, also the Caribbean, Colombia, Venezuela, Guatemala, and Honduras. The common name pincushion cactus refers to this and the closely related genus Escobaria, Guatemala, and Honduras. Mammillaria bocasana is commonly known as the powder puff cactus or powder puff pin cushion. It's commonly called the powder puff cactus because of its appearance like a cotton ball, as a small round plant is covered in white silky hairs. It is quite variable with lots of different varieties and forms available in cultivation. Mammillaria elongata, also known as the ladyfinger cactus, this plant takes the form of long cylinders, which are long, dark green and can measure up to about eight inches in height. The stems are covered in orange star-shaped spines, giving the plant a lacy patterned effect. This plant is easy to grow and ideal for beginners. It readily forms clumps, but if you wish to separate these to propagate new plants, remember to use protective gloves or tongs to prevent injury from the spines. It consists of densely packed clusters of elongated oval stems covered in harmless, although very sharp, yellow or brown spines and in spring produces white or yellow flowers. Gold lace cactus or ladyfingers cactus is a species of flowering plant native to central Mexico. It is the most common and most variable of its genus in nature and it is a popular subject for cultivation. Mammillaria elongata cristata brain cactus, a fascinating plant, albeit with a very descriptive name. One of the many species of the Mammillaria cristata is the form known as brain cactus. It is an easy to grow cactus which often produces lovely little blooms and makes a great houseplant or outdoor specimen in warmer climates. It gets its colorful name brain cactus due to its convoluted growth. One of the most bizarre pieces of Cristata information is how the shape occurs. The form is a result of damage to the plant when it is young. The cells at the injury site go crazy and multiply at a far faster rate than normal. This causes the twisted nature of the pads. Brain cactus is a common houseplant in its cultivation. In the wild of central Mexico, they occur in rocky outcroppings between crevices. Over time, they develop into a column of stems and small offsets. The spines are in closely gathered aerials and consist of several sizes, with the finest spines almost hair-like. Plants are green, but the hairy spines give it a grayish case. The brain cactus is a very unusual, bizarre-looking plant. Due to its crested nature of convoluted growth, it resembles the human brain and is highly sought after by collectors for its striking form. If given space, your brain cactus will just keep growing and getting larger. Thanks so much for joining us on Moody Blooms. I hope you enjoyed these fuzzy little succulents. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe.